magnum magnetic anomaly detect try something that when you've had a few beers glad it wasn't just me who fell over it before here we go very quiet relatively quieter taking off just over there than it was sitting right here in front of us warming up four four thousand six hundred shaft horsepower engines the aircraft has an endurance of up to 15 hours and a range of about 5,600 nautical miles or uh, about 9,000 kilometres. So a very, uh, very useful aircraft in that particular role. Does have a bathroom, does have a kitchen, a couple of bunks down the back. Uh, quite different comparing uh, the B versus the C in the uh, interior down the back big roomy in the B with uh, areas to load the sonoboys and so on. Has an armament uh, in the bomb bay, it'll take up to 20,000 pound. It has 10 wing stations, a hard points as well, where they can mount pylons. That'll take uh, torpedoes, sea mines, gravity bombs, depth charges, Harpoon Maverick and uh, the AGM-85 standoff land attack missiles. Torpedoes, heli boxes, all sorts of things, and uh, they've been useful for many, many years. Of course, took over from the uh, another Lockheed product, a wonderful Neptune, which two are sitting on the uh, taxiway just behind us here, opposite the Paul Bennett Air Shows trailer. Yep, two of uh, three, I think that Haas uh, currently has. Why not collect them all, right? Now, folks, uh, chatting with Rowan, one of the pilots, he was saying we should see a similar display to what they put on at Edinburgh back in 2019, which means they should come in for their first pass at about 300 knots and uh, of a max speed of 405, and then go into a right orbit, slowing right on down to about 180 knots. And that's always pretty spectacular, watching a, an Orion come in and flat chat and then just suddenly slow down in an orbit. They actually went into service with VP-8 of the US Navy and um, that was around 1962. So it's had a considerable operational career, as uh, Grant mentioned, still being flown by the Kiwis. Also a couple with uh, the US, uh, with NOAA, with the Hurricane Hunters. Yep, the, uh, those guys who fly into a hurricane. <laughs> I've never been able to understand what uh, <laughs> what drives a person to want to do that, but mm. certainly providing incredible amount of data to save many, many lives. Yep. My father actually did that in the Sunderland back in the 50s. I asked if they could go back in again. They said, nope. You can see... Uh, a little bit of uh, exhaust smokiness from those engines. That's yep. uh, very, very normal. Yep. Could um, see one on final approach. A big cloud of smoke before you saw the aircraft sometimes. A lot different to uh, like the B-52 where you could see it coming from miles <laughs> and miles away. Same with the 707. Same we actually the introduced them with 11 Squadron in May 1968. And uh, equipped number 82 wing with uh, 10 and 11 Squadrons. So they've been operating um, Neptunes before and uh, also um, the, the maritime version of the Lincoln that was specifically produced here in Australia. Was that the Shackleton? No, no, the Lincoln. Okay. Uh, the, the one that we built, we built oh. it with a normal short nose and then we built the Mark 31 with a very much extended nose for the long range work. That was it. Looking great as it banks around with the escarpment in the background colours slightly changing as it goes under the clouds, getting the sun in different angles. Always a beautiful looking aircraft for the, this one for me. And uh, the guys said that uh, what we sh should see here is that they're going to have the Bombay doors open, so we'll see if I'm right on this one. And if they do, this is where they carry torpedoes and air sea rescue kits, as Ando was saying. No. Nope. 92 wing had uh, 
10 and 11 squadrons. It also had number 292 training unit and uh, 492 squadron, which was uh, there for all the maintenance support. And they were based over at Edinburgh in South Australia, just north of Adelaide. Well, that's the last time I trust my friends to tell me what's coming up in the show. I'll have to give them a stir after this for a couple of things now. 18 of these aircraft were converted to AP-3C specifications and uh, the first was delivered in 2001 with new radar, nose-mounted electro-optical infrared sensors, nav equipment, signals and electronic intelligence gathering gear. So uh, they also did another upgrade in 2008. And, uh, they've had detachments uh, in the Middle East the war of terrorism in Iraq and uh, some of them were modified significantly for the secret squirrel stuff to uh, with what they call SIGI or signals intelligence. And towards the end there they were even able to fire the harpoon missile and a gentleman I worked with actually had a uh, panel for launching the harpoon from when he worked with the Iran. I was asking how the hell you do that? That's the equipment that he, that he leant over and said from the simulator. So he was allowed to have it in the civilian role. There's one of these aircraft that you may recall, Tony Bullimore, round the world yacht race in the Great Southern Ocean. Uh, the uh, craft found it and went upside down and it was a P3 that found him in horrendous conditions and directed an Australian Navy vessel to actually pick him up. Coming in from the left, from the south, oh, lots of smoke. So this is a bit of a high speed run now. Been told it's the last pass, have a listen to this. You might have seen just under the fuselage there behind the wing, there's a, a particular position there that had a whole lot of what looked like uh, little doors. And that's where you uh, dropped out the Sono boys to, to pick up the signals from uh, the submarines. Absolutely beautiful sound. Aircraft flown today by Alex Jackson and Mike Price from Haas, former um, P3 pilots. Again, part of the cadre of uh, very experienced pilots down here at Haas. They operate a huge variety of aircraft, basically from the Tiger Moth, the three-engine de Havilland Australia Drover, uh, the P3, the Connie, there's all manner of wondrous things. And very soon, the replica of uh, Sir Charles Kingsford Smith's Southern Cross should take back to the air. The aircraft was purchased from the South Australian government in damaged condition. Uh, Haas have done a magnificent job on repairing the wings and they're just waiting on radios and transponders now and we will see next year at uh, this wings over the Illawarra we'll see the uh, Southern Cross flying. That would be great to see because uh, the last few that I've been here with you you've been able to report on progress of that restoration and also a, uh, a lady who was selling a book about it, I believe. That's right, uh, that was the very lovely Gay Taylor, daughter of P.G. Taylor. And uh, there you go. Wonderful lady, she uh, lives up on the north coast. She's actually a tour guide up at the, uh, the Byron Bay Lighthouse. Cool. You can see the landing lights to the north on the right as the P3 is setting itself up to come on down. Now's the time to apply for a career in the Australian Defence Force. 
you'll enjoy a rich and rewarding blend of career and lifestyle opportunities, fulfilling work, job security, and many benefits. Join Defence Force Recruiting at Wings Over Illawarra and speak with current serving members about starting your application or apply online at defencejobs.gov.au. to reach maximum altitude, check out our bar partners this year at Wings. Trolleyed are activating the Aviator Bar <laughs> with their Shorts 330 cockpit and fuselage. They'll be providing first class service with their aviation 